Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the ultimate beginner's tutorial for Scum in 2023. And today we are going to do sentry training. So this is what the new sentries are going to look like. You can see um, two big fuel flamethrower gas canisters there at the bottom. Machine gun there on the left. Um, so as you guys can see, they're going to look totally different. Quite interested in, in where their weak points are going to be. Looks like their camera is going to be down there. Okay, so we're getting new models that we will be able to destroy with rocket launchers. Um, and yeah, they're going to have different behavior. If you get close to them, they're probably going to burn you to death. The, I'm very interested to see what the flamethrower animation is going to look like. But... This tutorial is based on all the information that you need to know. And I do think that the new sentries mechanics with how you hide from them or how they work should be very, very accurate to how it is at the moment. Because so many servers remove sentries from, you know, remove the sentries because um, a lot of people find them frustrating. I don't think they will make the sentries much harder with how you stay away from them or how you you know how you the methods that you have now for them not to detect you i think those methods will stay exactly the same so without any further ado let me teach you guys how to deal with sentries before we go looting in places where there are sentries so sit back, relax, and take some notes. Let's go. So, first things first, I want you guys to focus on the little speaker icon on, on the bottom left of the screen where you see your health, your stamina, your food, and your water. At the top, there's an eye icon and a speaker icon. So today, we're going to focus on the speaker icon to see how what's the, what's the difference in noise level um with different stealth skills okay so the first character i'm showing you guys has got zero stealth um and i'm showing you guys here that yes less gear makes a difference but that's not where most of your stealth comes from stealth doesn't really come from carrying less gear it's more about your stealth skill <clears throat> when it comes to the noise that you're making. So the higher your stealth is, the less noise you make. So as you guys can see, our noise meter is at that level where we're just running normally through the snow. And I'm going to do all the tests right here with no stealth, basic stealth, medium stealth, and advanced stealth to show you guys the clear differences, okay? So with standard gear, like you would usually wear when you come to a bunker, that's the that's the sound level that we're making. You can see the popper detected us quite early. And what we're gonna focus on here is running past the Meg, getting into a bunker at the same location and seeing the difference between that sentry detecting you, okay? So sentries, have got two ways of detecting you, either by seeing you or by hearing you, just like any AI. And as you can see, we've got zero stealth. You guys can focus on the little speaker icon at the bottom. And I'm going to run now as soon as I'm out of his vision. So I'm going to use third person to see when he's at that wall. He's not seeing any no Now it's just due to sound. As you guys can see, he detected me as soon as I came past that that house, okay? As soon, like he turned around extremely fast. That was not due to vision, that was due to sound. So sound is your biggest enemy versus sentries. So let's move on. So, in the second clip, we've got basic stealth now, okay? Same place, basic stealth. You guys won't see a major difference when I'm running, um, but all you can do is you can take the video from the start where you look at that speaker at the top of the, next to the health bar, okay? You can look at how much noise I'm making while I'm running through snow in the beginning of the video and compare that to the character that has advanced. 
But again, we're gonna see how fast the sentry can detects us with basic stealth. Okay, so still detected us, but a little bit later, okay? Detected us a little bit later. So what we can see is there is a difference between no stealth and basic stealth, but not a lot, okay? Then if we quickly have a look here at the third clip, we've got medium stealth now. And this is what I recommend for most players. Like this is my... This is my comfort zone. Um, I don't struggle with megs a lot. And again, I'm just showing you guys to look at the speaker, but I'm more like pointing to this there at the top, the little speaker. Now, now I'll show you guys where the speaker is. So you guys can see we're definitely making less noise. Okay. Don't know if you guys can see it, but if you look at that speaker bar, we're definitely making less noise while we're running. Same amount of gear. When we take our shoes off, doesn't make a major difference. Okay. Taking the shoes off doesn't make a major difference um, to the AI. So we're going to do exactly the same test. Going to wait for him to go. I'm going to run. And as you guys can see, there's already a massive difference to medium. Okay? They didn't do anything fancy, but... This is where you guys will see that stealth has a major effect. I don't care if you try and run naked past this MiG or whether you try and run with, with gear on you. It's not, gonna, it's not going to help you with your survival against the MiG. So the biggest reason people die to sentries, and I'm going to mix the words up, sorry. The biggest reason people die of sentries is because they're trying to get into a bunker and the sentry detects them. As soon as the sentry detects you, it's going to start shooting at you regularly. Like, as soon as the light changes. I don't know if they're going to change that with the new sentries. And now that one detected me quite late and I can abuse that. Usually when he detects you, then he goes on top of the bunker, okay, which... Like I said, I think that's where the new sentries are going to change. These sentries get stuck a lot, um, you know, where they can't move and it makes it uncomfortable for you to get into the bunker. Here, I'm going to show you guys another bunker. Because we can get past that sentry quite easy, I'm just going to show you guys another bunker. Because I want you to understand how, how powerful stealth is versus sentries a lot of the people that hate sentries or that just refuse to play on servers with sentries usually don't put any focus into their skills okay which means that they don't really know how much power your stealth skill has so for me personally if sentries had a major emotional impact on me like i couldn't enjoy the game because of them I would literally AFK uh, my stealth skill, okay, um, which I will show you guys in the next video, okay, if you guys are interested in the next video, I'll show you how to level up your stealth, but basically you just make um, three foundations, so you put one foundation, you place one foundation, put one on the right of the foundation, and to the bottom of the foundation, so that you create a corner, and you crawl into the corner on grass, okay so yeah i'm just showing you guys that with medium stealth i've got i've got a lot of control over sentries the one thing that never changes okay the only thing that never changes the only skill that i have to develop on my own where the stealth doesn't make it easy for me is the vision and a sentry has a 180 degree vision cone around him not a 360 degree because you can't see you when you're behind him but here i'm going to jog behind him just to show you guys that stealth has a major major impact okay he's going to detect me here when i get too close but stealth has a major major impact and you don't really need to fear them when you understand how they work uh, is it frustrating when they shoot you? Sure. But with medium stealth, you can really start playing around with sentries and not really fear them.
And then here on the next clip, we gonna have advanced stealth, if I'm right. Yeah. So here is where you can literally start. This is how, how you guys can see how important stealth is. And I want you to look at that speaker now. Okay? Look at that speaker. That is about half the noise, guys. Very, very close to half the noise that we made with no stealth. Okay? So not only will players struggle to hear you, AI will struggle to hear you as well. Okay? So stealth has a major benefit for PvP and PvE because it affects the overall noise that you're making. But once you get, once you take advanced or once you AFK your character to advanced, then you don't think about sound anymore. The only thing you think of is vision because vision is the thing that most people struggle with. And the reason why they struggle is because they don't understand the, the height of the sentry. They don't understand that the sentry is, is very high and can detect you from very, very far away. Okay, I would say at least 150 to 200 meters away, a sentry can detect you. Okay, um, but if I have to average it, I'd say I average it on 150 meters. From 150 meters away, a sentry can detect you. And later, we're going to focus on vision. For now, we are just focusing on sound. Okay? He saw me there. It's not a problem. I can still play around with him. Okay? Because the only power he has over me now is vision. So, the stealth. Can you not worry about sentries with no stealth skill? Yes. But then again, you. Then it's all dependent on you. Okay? Um, then, then, it, then, then it depends on how you manage the situation, how good you are with um, using bushes, how good you are with knowing at like almost at what exact distance the sentry is going to detect you. Okay, but with stealth, that responsibility goes away. So with advanced stealth, the only thing that you're worried about is vision. You can literally walk up behind a puppet, you know, like get a half a meter. And all I'm doing now is logging out to reset the sentry because I've alerted them now. Um, and I just want to show you guys what you can do. And I don't want the sentry to shoot me immediately. Okay. But it's very important for me to focus on the sound. The amount of gear that you're wearing will make a small difference, but that is not the that is not the best way to make sure that sentries don't detect you. The best way is with stealth, and I will prove that to you right now. And it's very, very important that you guys understand sound is the biggest killer in scum when it comes to sentries. Because the, uh, the, the most amount of times that people get frustrated is when they try and run into a bunker and the sentry detects them from very far away. And then they don't understand how did the sentry turn around, you know? I, I was behind it. How did it turn around? And you guys saw with, basic, with no stealth and basic stealth, the sentry detected us very, very fast, okay? Where with... Advanced stealth. I'm going to show you guys that I'm. I, you can literally play around with the sentry, and I'd suggest you guys going into single player and just playing around with the character with advanced stealth, so that you can become comfortable with them. Because the most frustration comes from not being relaxed when you're close to a sentry. I don't know whether it is, you know, the, the frustration of dying or the frustration of losing your gear, but I feel a lot of people get nervous, you know, when they're close to sentries, and as soon as the sentry starts shooting at them, um, all tactical decisions go out, go out of the window, okay? But as soon as you understand that a sentry is very sound-reliant to detect you, 
And as soon as you understand which way they're going to turn, okay, like there, I show you guys that I knew which way it was going to turn. I'm going to detect here. I'm not stressing. I understand that going against this wall is going to, you know, cut off his shooting angle. Now I know he's going to go to that gap so I can use him going to that gap to my advantage. So you can literally use the fact, use his vision against him. You can go somewhere, let him see you on purpose to draw him away from where you want to be. Okay? So even with zero stealth, you can still get into a bunker by just manipulating him like I'm manipulating him here. The only negative thing about that is on a on a populated server, you are taking the risk that other people know where you are because a meg only shoots or talks to players. So yes, you can get into a bunker very, very, or a point of interest where he's guarding it very, very easily if you manipulate him by drawing him out to where you want him to be. The negative thing is that you are telling everyone in that area that you are here, okay? So it helps you against the sentry, but it doesn't help you against players. Where if you master a sentry, then the sentry will never let anyone know you're here. The players will never know you're here. And because of advanced stealth, you will hear the other players in the bunker way before they hear you. And here I'm just trying to get as close as I possibly can, guys. You guys saw how close I got there. I can, you can literally walk right against the MiG. I jogged almost up to the MiG, okay? Or the Sentry. Um, I always call them MiGs, but, you know, let's try and be accurate here with Sentries. So... Yeah, that's the biggest thing that I want you guys to understand. And then the airfield, the B2 airfield, um, or the B3 airfield, whichever one you want to call it, is a very good training ground for vision. As you can see, that sentry is looking my way, but he's not detecting me. I'm out of his vision range, okay? Which I do guess is about 100 to 150 meters away. But it's almost like on the side of the airstrip, they don't see you. Sound is not going to be your biggest enemy. Vision is going to be your biggest enemy. Because the sentry is covering a very large area at the moment, okay? It's not about getting close to them. It's about being not detected by them. And since you can be far away from them most of the time, sound is not going to be the issue. It's going to be vision. So the second thing that you need to learn about a sentry is now that we know how to counter him hearing you, how do we counter him seeing you? And once we've countered those two, we won't have a problem with anymore because they can't hear you and they can't see you, okay? You can master them because they are AI. They will always behave the same where you are, <laughs> you're a human being with, with limitless potential, with limitless learning capabilities, and you can do whatever you want. They are programmed to do the same thing all the time. You can do a billion things, a billion different things regarding them. So you are just superior to them in every single way, okay? So now I'm just showing you guys that any bush you stand in cancels the vision. If you stand in the bush, they can't see you. If you stand behind the bush, it's they can't see you either. In third person, you can still see them, but they can't see you. And a good way of thumb to know if they can see you is going to first person. If, if, if they can't see you, if you can't see them in first person, they can't see you in first person. And then here I'm just showing you it's very important to know the root of the Meg before choosing a bush. Now that bush was a little bit small. On a bigger bush, I could have gotten out of his way. The only thing is that um, when he's that close to you, he will detect any movement, okay? So here we go again. Um, we're gonna die um, to him again. 
Um, just so that you can understand that knowing their roots is extremely important. If dying, again, this is for people that struggle with centuries, and this is for people who don't like playing with centuries. There are a lot of people that just stay away from every point of interest because of centuries. There are people that play on servers without centuries just because of the centuries, okay? And then there's people that get very, very frustrated when they die to a century, you know, or when the centuries do weird things. And the centuries do do weird things, but mostly the centuries do weird things after they've detected you. Like when their light is yellow or red, then they won't talk to you um, anymore. And a lot of people also like it that the first time the sentry detects you, you can put up your hands because, yeah, you can put up your hands and then run away. But um, that doesn't always work. So again, he's going to step on me. Just giving you a clear example there that knowing his route is very, very important. Um, it's very important to be, to have control over what you're doing. Because if you're in a fight, if you're fighting with someone in the airfield, then these things can be the difference between who wins that fight. Because if he chose a bush um, that was on the sentry's path, then he's going to die. But now I'm showing you guys just that, you know, I, I, I was doing this so that you, you know, I want to show you guys everything that can happen so that you guys don't get frustrated by it. Again, I'm walking behind him because I've got a high, you know, I've got a high stealth skill. And now I can take my time because I know his route. I know roughly how much time I have. I know I'm standing in a bush. The fact that I'm standing in a bush makes me 100% safe. The only fear is when he does his complete route, which I know roughly how big his route is. And what I'm going to be doing is just telling you guys or showing you guys that at scummap.com, if you don't want to take your time to learn their roots, and what I usually do is I count their steps. They've got certain steps. So when I'm at a bunker, I count how many steps they take away from the bunker. And that's the amount of time I have to get into the bunker. And then I I'd count the amount of steps that they walk towards the bunker. Okay? Just to... And you will be amazed by how much that differs from bunker to bunker. There are some bunkers where there's where their steps away from the bunker are very, very short. So you can, if you want to, and you don't want to AFK stealth, you can use what I'm learning, teaching you here, to just go to bunkers where they do take at least 9 to 12 steps away from the bunker so that you've got more than enough time to get in there. Because when they take 9 or 12 steps away from the bunker, then you've got more than enough time to jog to a bush, you know, wait for them to complete their cycle again, and then from the bush, you go to the bunker door. Instead of running to the bunker door, where they will probably hear you because you've got low stealth. But even with no stealth, you can still jog to the nearest bush that's close to the bunker door, and then from the bush, you wait for them to do the entire cycle again, and then when they start walking away from the bunker door, then you go from the bush, you jog to the bunker door, okay? But once again, guys, I'm just showing you that I've become very, very comfortable with sentries. But the reason is because I've, di I've died to them thousands of times to get to that comfortable to get to that comfort zone. You can't get comfortable with anything in life if you don't do it repeatedly. Like talking to a woman or a you know, or someone that you like. Um, like most of us aren't young anymore, but all of us remember the heart attack, you know, or the 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 immense emotional or physical pressure that you feel when you're trying to talk to a woman that you like or that you're interested in. But if you do that every single day, you know, if you talk to a woman that you're not that invested in, or, you know, if you just talk to a woman that you don't think is the one um, every single day, you'll become comfortable with it. If you don't PvP every day, when you're in a PvP situation, you'll get a heart attack. 
Um, but if you PvP every single day, you know, it, it, you become comfortable with it. So that's the any anything that you struggle with in scum, take it head on. Put yourself in a in com, uncomfortable situation on purpose. That is very, very important. Take control over that distressing feeling because you will always stress when they detect you when you don't want them to detect you. But if you play around with them and you see how far you can go with them, like you literally test yourself against them on purpose and you say to yourself, I don't care if I get detected by them, I'm going to play around with them. When they detect you, when you're in control of it, it doesn't feel that bad. It's when you don't want to get detected by them and they detect you and, you know, shoot you or kill you or step on your gear and crush your gear, you know, or they shoot you through walls or stuff like that. There's a lot of th frustrating things that can happen when you're trying to stay away from them. So I, I I'm giving you... Um, I implore you to go to single player, start with medium stealth, start with advanced stealth, see the difference, and play around with them like I'm playing around with them here. And that's the only reason that I can help you guys understand, is because I don't play the game in a, in a standard way most of the time. Most of my time goes into this just goes into figuring out i had a suppressor on okay he heard me with the suppressor okay? um like just playing around with different things that's how i know i can ramp across a river because i've tried to ramp across that river a hundred times okay you don't become a world famous daredevil because you've never tried some because you've never failed you only succeed at something when you have you know, failed a lot. Of it. You only master something once you failed a lot with it. Like there's a saying, you can only master something if you've done it like 10 million times or something like that. And I think there's the, the light bulb one, you know. And like I think someone asked Edison, you know, how did it feel um, failing at making a light bulb, you know. Um, at 60 times or 80 times or how many ever times you failed he said no it was a very good learning experience because he figured out 80 ways how to not make a light bulb and that's how i want you guys to think when you fail it's not it's not you didn't it's not a negative thing it's only a negative thing if you don't learn from it so every time you fail you have figured out, you have learned how not to do it. And the more you learn how not to do it, the closer you get to how to do it. Okay? But you can either learn from me, but I mean, I don't know everything that you guys are interested in. And that's why I make tutorials. Is so that, and that's why I talk a lot. People call it fluff. Um, I just talk, I just call it human communication. Communication is very important in any relationship and communication is very important with friendships and with you know, and with the community. So communication is important for me to tell you guys that I don't know what you're interested is interested in. I can't maybe I have, I don't know, but I can't help you with everything that you're trying to figure out. But I can help you with how to figure it out and the way to figure it out is get a thousand ways how not to do it so that you can come up you know that you can come across the way to do it and with my experience even when you figure out how to do it don't put up the poster on your wall don't take out the trophy and go guys i know how to do it i know what's the best because a lot of times in scum i've all i've always improved there's always a better way to do it 
there's a way that works, like there is a light bulb that works, but it doesn't work perfectly, okay? Sometimes it burns out, stuff like that. So now we've got better light bulbs, okay? So just because you've discovered how to make a light bulb, don't think that it's the best light bulb. Or there's always room for improvement. And I learn new things every single day because I'm looking for those new things. I enjoy learning. I enjoy figuring things out. Because if I didn't want to figure things out, I would go play PUBG or Call of Duty or any game where I can just kick a button and it's all about one thing. Like, for instance, I enjoy Diablo 4, okay? Like, I want to play Diablo 4, but I don't want to play Diablo 4 because I have to think. Yes, there's a few things to think about, but I mean, I don't care about bolts. Uh, I'm not going to go to a website and figure out the best bolt on Diablo. I play Diablo for the lore, for the storyline, and for the cool graphics. That's why I play Diablo 4. I'm not going to watch any guys. I'm not going to go to the bolts that everyone goes to. Um, I'm just going to play the game once, and that's it. Yeah? If I finish it on normal, maybe I'll come back to finish it on a harder difficulty. I don't know. But I play Diablo for the dialogue, for the story, and to relax. Okay, But I can compare Diablo also to a non-thinking game. But that's not why I play Scum. That is not why I why I say Scum is the best survival game on the planet. I say Scum is the best survival game on the planet because they've broken the mold of survival games. It's not just ABC. A lot of survival games, you know, <laughs> have to think about, it. we're going to call it a survival game, but are we going to add hunger and thirst to the game? Because a lot of people don't like focusing on hunger and thirst. Where Scum said... Those are not survival game players. Now, the only sad thing is that, you know, they've nerved all the in-depth survival mechanics, like trench food and infections and stuff like that. They've nerved it so much that any serious survival game player like me doesn't have to think about it anymore. But I understand for the casual, you know, for the casual player, it's probably better. But Scum has a lot of things that you have to learn and adapt to over time with, with each and every update. And even today, I learn new things. And that's why I love Scum. So if I can help you guys with one thing today is do not be frustrated when you fail. Every time you fail, be excited about the opportunity to do it better. Be excited about the opportunity to be to learn something. Because that's what life is. Life is about imp making the most, you know, getting the most out of what you were meant to do. And I truly believe that we are limitless with our knowledge and with our capabilities in life. Um, <clears throat> I don't think Elon Musk is a gene is is way. You know, he's a way more important person than me. I feel we are equally, you know, equally important. It's just my gift to the world is not the same as his gift to the world. So we have to strive for those gifts and understand why we are here. And once you understand why you are here, then the, then the game called life will become much less frustrating and a lot more fun. And then when you fail in life, it's not frustrating. It's exciting because you have figured out a thousand ways not to do it. I love you all. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. And if you want to see and learn everything there is to see and learn about Scum, Hit that subscribe button. See you guys later. Cheers.